All right, everybody, welcome back to our Palo Alto studio. We're here at Future Ready Storage. We're redefining data center boundaries, hashtag IBM Cube. This is a global event. We've got watch parties in Atlanta, London, Istanbul, and right now we've got somebody coming in from Stuttgart, Germany. Ivo Kerner is the Chief Revenue Officer at IBM Storage, and Scott Baker is the CMO and VP of IBM Storage back live in the studio. Scott, good to see you. Ivo, thanks for coming in from Germany. Always great to see Thanks. you as well. Uh, really happy to be here. You know, I got to say, I, we've been going, John and I have been going all day. I, I'm hungry. I, you know, I, you, I, yeah. I, I know. I'm pretty hungry as well. In fact, I actually brought some pizza here for us. Yeah. You know, we've talked a lot today about different kinds of advancements that we're bringing into the market. And one of those things that we did talk about uh, was the 5300. That thing is nearly two petabytes of effective capacity in a single rack unit. And many of you out there might wonder, what does a single rack unit look like? Well, take a look right here to the side. You'll see that I got a nice little pizza. Wait, wait, give me a slice. Give me a slice. Talk, take talk a look at this right here. <laughs> this is what two, almost two petabytes look like inside of the data center today. This is the future of storage. In fact, not only did we bring that to market, we talked a lot about the storage assurance model, a new way to consume and subscribe to future innovations just like this from IBM. I mean, man, isn't that beautiful? It's tasty. It looks very tasty. Uh, I don't know if we've got anything to cut that. I think we might need a welding torch for that. <laughs> But at any rate, aside from the project assurance or the storage assurance pro uh, program that we brought to market, the other thing that we did is we also really took this idea of injecting AI and ML down to the hardware layer. Every one of the computational storage devices that are in here, the, what we call the flash core modules themselves, actually have the ability to look at the heuristics of data as it comes into the box. Really look for those patterns that could be indicative of an issue that an organization might have to attend to whether that's corruption in the data, it could be infiltration, exfiltration of the data, it could be a threat, you name it. The important thing that I want to share with you is when you make that investment in the storage assurance program, when you look to adopt a product like the 5300, you're getting these kinds of innovations. And listen, Dave, John, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not stopping. We've got more to come this year and I'm really excited about it. I love the one U box. It's been really going to get props from the customers throughout the event we've been having here. So I want to hear more from Evo on what he's hearing in the landscape with customers as they try to bring in the innovation as well as maintain operations. We want to get your take. Evo, can you share with us what you're hearing in the landscape? Again, we've got to bring in innovation to power AI. Yeah, and, uh, and, and John, I think you, you and Dave uh, touched it already. And uh, also Dennis uh, in the intro, when you had the introduction, um, basically you, you, you shared already my perspective here. And I, I think it's, uh, it's currently a common understanding in the industry yeah? um, that the largest challenge that, uh, that companies and clients today must deal with is really managing their IT operation while incorporating an ever increasing innovation into their landscape. Yeah? The rate and pace of innovation is basically increasing. And you touched it too, yeah? adopting AI, I think is right now one of the fundamental challenges that many companies currently have and will have in the future. But at the same time, they need to maintain a secure operation, yeah? ensuring topics like we discussed uh, during, during the launch event, yeah? data resiliency to address cyber threats. Yeah? So this, this is basically really that, uh, what I describe as a field of tension that, that you need to work with and live through in the current times. It's a very timely conversation. As we said at the top, John, you've got the yeah. macro headwinds and you know, CFOs aren't just opening up the checkbook, they're still forcing IT departments to you know, do more with less, if you will. But at the same time, they're chasing the AI innovation because they know if they don't, they're going to get left behind. So Scott, how do you see that, that balance? How should we be thinking about that? You know, that's a, a really interesting question. You know, there's multiple ways that we can look at that. But if we stay focused specifically on what that means from the perspective of the storage itself, you're now talking about the necessity to host larger and larger language models that stretch across different kinds of data types. And when we look specifically at primary storage, where a lot of the day-to-day -day activities are occurring with those really mission critical, and if not operationally critical workloads, uh, what you're really looking for is the ability to balance between the capacity that you need and then the cost strategies that you have in place to protect that budget. That's a really difficult thing for people to do as they think about how do I bring in new innovations so that I can keep my business moving forward. I want to get into the operating model if you guys can comment on this because the operating model we're hearing from this news is better operational consumption of storage, storage for life, I love that value proposition, but also innovation. 
Um, you've got the financial cost and then the operational for innovation. Evo, what does that mean uh, for you guys and your customers? That's a big part of the story here, both operational and financial benefits. We heard from the watch parties all around the world. Um, they love that, everyone's happy. Procurement's happy, uh, developers are happy, IT's happy. Um, everyone's kind of happy. This is a big part of the operational financial balance here. Can you share uh, more on that topic, please? And, and I think we, we, we touched it also in a, in a couple of those uh, presentation and discussions today. Yeah? If you really look on where, where clients spending money today, yeah? if you get your, your IT budget, yeah, and uh, we can debate the numbers, but if you take and running operation is basically refreshing just the, the current infrastructure, um, keeping, let's say, keeping the lights on. So the money they have for innovation is, is getting tinier and tinier. If you then add on top of that regulatory requirements, yeah, I just had a discussion with the CTO of a large financial services institution that I have 20% budget free to invest in to modernize my application landscape. I think with the with the IBM storage assurance uh, model, we are really freeing up innovation budget budget that you then can invest into really modernizing your application landscape, budget that you can use in implementing innovation like AI. And the model is really, let's say, at the same time, yeah, the, the fear that you have if you're going into such a model, yeah, you are locked in into a technology and you just get, let's say, the lowest level of uh, technology refresh. And I think the beauty of the program that we started is um, you get up to date in the newest technology and newest innovation. And uh, I think, uh, Dave, you mentioned it too uh, in one of the discussions, yeah? Uh, what I think is absolutely critical, it is for, let's say, for clients who want to own the asset. Yeah? Yes, you can do similar things if you have a storage as a service solution, but if you want to own the asset and there are a couple of requirements where clients are required to own the asset and you're not allowed to move this into an as a service model, um, that is, it for me, is one of the key differentiators and is setting the whole thing apart. Ivo, I want to, if we could stay with you for a moment, because anytime I get somebody who's on the ground in, in Europe, I like to ask them this question. There's been, I mean, Western Europe, the EU has led with, uh, pr with privacy. We certainly saw that with GDPR. They're, they're leading now in the, in the AI era. One of the big conversations is data sovereignty, you know, leaving data in country. And virtually every country that you, you, know, you, you visit now has some kind of, uh, you know, thinking around data sovereignty. Are you are you hearing a lot of, of that when you talk to customers? And and what can you share with us? It, to be honest, it's absolutely it's absolutely critical. The minute you you talk with clients, especially in regulated environments or in in industries that are I would define as critical infrastructure or defined by the government as critical infrastructure, data sovereignty is is the key topic. Yeah, it basically it it it's down to the point that the country doesn't. The data doesn't is allowed to leave the country, or you need to completely operate in the country. Uh, to the extent, yeah, that you need to prove that you have recovery cycles and uh, re return to operation cycles, even if you would put data on the hyperscalers in less than twenty four hours. So um, I think this this regulation that we that we are seeing coming in Europe, you will you will also recognize in uh, in APEC. Australia is starting to do an, an AI and uh, data protection uh, regulation. And I think uh, in the US, things will come and will deliver or develop in the same direction. Yeah? So it is a key requirement. Yeah? And that's why, again, I think is you need to own the asset and you need to own the data source is going to be critical, absolutely critical. And the AI piece um, specifically is a big conversation uh, in your and everywhere, by the way. So where it's stored matters, and where it's protected matters. AI, AI Act uh, just uh, just basically approved. It's going to to start the beginning of 2025. And again, uh, the, turning the twist back to in, into an AI discussion, yeah, you you definitely want to let's say keep your data <coughs> on your premise in your data centers. You don't want to put everything into into public cloud or hybrid cloud uh, environments. Scott, maybe you could sort of summarize the day here, how you guys see helping customers 
storage assurance, new products, innovation, balancing you know, that equation. Give yeah. us an overall summary. You got it. So you know, we talked a little bit about the needs that organizations are going to have as they think about how they're going to store their data. But imagine doing that at scale. You know, your CapEx budget is really, really tight these days. Now, I know there's a lot of investment that's being made as they think about how they spend money to adopt uh, and grow into the AI for, you know, sort of workload perspective, but still there's always going to be a focus on how do I get the most out of that CapEx budget. I really love that IBM is bringing this kind of an opportunity to customers through storage assurance. And in fact, what I would even tell you is once you invest in storage assurance, it's the last flash array you'll ever buy. Perpetual is actually in the word in the announcement, perpetual relationship. That's this right. is one of the things you guys are betting on. It's a big bet. Customers are liking it, we hear the feedback. Where do you see this going? I mean, obviously it's a relationship. Do you see it kind of being invisible to the customer? I mean, it sounds like you're taking care of everything. Uh, that's exactly right. And you know, this really aligns very nicely you know, to what Sam and Dennis had talked about earlier in the show. How do we build this foundation for true hybrid cloud, right? We know that there's always going to be hyperscalers out there that are going to provide you know, compute and capacity and people are going to adopt that as it makes sense. But at the same time, it's our responsibility to make sure that we put that kind of a foundation on-prem for the organizations that are looking to do that. And the last thing that we want them to do is have to adopt a bunch of different piecemeal components and try to cobble those things together to achieve what they're after. We want to put one box in the data center that meets their workload needs, but becomes the foundation for adopting future innovation in a non-disruptive way as they need to. I and we're going to back that by a guarantee. Well, the number one thing in cloud that they, people loved was the elastic nature. But with AI, people getting over their skis on visibility into the economics. You address that with the Sure, the sure program, with Perpetual. Now you say that, that's on the economic side, and Hugo talks about it. Now you get the data side. Data is the intellectual property. So people aren't going to just merge their data with other data sources, especially some of the foundation models that aren't yet vetted or trusted. So we're kind of getting in this era of, I won't say software supply chain like kind of dynamics, but data supply chain where you need to track it. Evo, you kind of yeah. tease on that, Scott brings it up. This is going to be a big deal. So if I'm a, if I'm a customer, I'm thinking, okay, don't break the bank. I need assurance. I'm going to buy as I go, but I want to scale up and, and build my capacity in. That's essentially what you guys are offering customers. You know, that's exactly right. If you think about the emotional impact of any kind of technology adoption, one of the biggest hurdles or obstacles to get over is how far out are you willing to put your reputation, right, your neck on the line to make a recommendation on adopting new technology. Let's just get that off the table. Let's just give the customer the guarantees that they need that we're going to give them the absolute best to put that into the data center today and know that as we bring in new technologies, the next revolution of primary storage with that flash system portfolio, then they're ready to adopt that non-disruptively as a part of this assurance program. You mentioned a guarantee. What's the, what's the guarantee? Well, you know, I'm really glad that you brought that up. There's a lot of details that roll into that guarantee in terms of uh, capacity, performance, et cetera, meeting those obligations based on the arrangements that we make with the customer. Uh, we actually had Audrey talking a little bit about that earlier today in this program. And we've got a link that we're going to provide to everyone that you'll be able to hit to look exactly at what those guarantees are. And those complement the things that we've already had in place, a cyber resilience guarantee, capacity guarantees, things of that nature. Okay, good. Uh, and then uh, last question for you, Evo, is when you talk to customers about the guarantees, because I've seen them all, and there's, there's always a lot of fine print. Some of them are really gimmicky. How are customers responding to, to your guarantee? Um, to be honest, as we just announced, yeah, we we just discussed it with a with a couple of uh, of clients. So it's uh, it's not uh, broad in the market, uh, but let's say the, the way the the way that we discuss it and the way it is it is referenced. You know, what I, what I really love is um, the full system hardware refresh that we're guaranteeing, and I think Audrey Audrey mentioned it. Yeah, where there there are guarantees out there yeah, where you basically just update the control after a certain point in time. What uh, What is really setting us apart and was re resonating super positive is that we're really planning and willing and doing a full system hardware refresh in this life cycle of the contract. And uh, that is, I think, uh, definitely resonating it because otherwise it's, it's a kind of uh, half bacon, this is this is the full thing that we're delivering. I like that because it's 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 not it's not even an if then it's an it's a we're gonna do this period full stop. Yeah. So Evo I know it's late yeah. there. Thank you so much. 
uh, for spending some time with us uh, and really appreciate your perspectives. Thank you for having me. Uh, Scott, always a pleasure. Uh, I was, I'm still hungry, but uh, congratulations <laughs> on, on getting this done. Uh, really, Dinner time is over for me. <laughs> <laughs> with the pizza box here, that's right. Uh, great, okay, John, we're gonna be back uh, right after this, uh, this br short break. We're gonna have a little analyst wrap. Uh, Scott, again, thank you. Evo, thank you. Keep it right there. You're watching live the CUBE studio in Palo Alto. It is future-ready storage that redefines data center boundaries. Right back.